I came here from San Francisco, I told my friends on Facebook that if things were going to be developing in a very positive way in a month that I'd be out here. So the answer of who brought me out here was Post Carbon Institute because they saw me online saying that I was going to come out here and they knew that I study the end of growth quite a bit and peak oil and the real cause and all the problems that, and successes that we see here. And so they offered to play for my plane ticket. So I am forever grateful to both <laughs> All right. All right. Um, what do you think is wrong with the system? What's wrong with the system, if the question is the system that we currently have here in the United States and the rest of the world, is that we are on a growth paradigm, meaning that the Democrats want growth through investments in uh, government and taxes. The Republicans want growth through uh, austerity and other wacky corporate stuff. And at the end of the day, everyone's pushing for growth without asking, what does it take to grow? And what it takes to grow is oil. And it takes water, clean water. It takes trees and all these things that we are running out of and we can't replenish at the rate that we need to continue a society where we can have these street lights on all night, where we can uh, be able to travel at the drop of a hat. And we're on a path right now to use as many resources as possible, as fast as we can, so that we don't even have time to adapt to fuels like solar uh, and wind and biofuels. Uh, we're on a, a path right now where we're not even gonna have those available to us. So I'm out here to give people that perspective and think bigger than just Bank of America because Bank of America goes away, you're going to have another bank that comes up. You want to put a CEO on a new, another CEO is going to come up. You know, you want to fight the man, you, you want the, the rich to be taxed so that you can have five peanuts instead of four peanuts. <laughs> and that, that's not really going to be the answer to your problems. The answer to your problems is that you're going to need to change your lifestyle and it's got to be a combination if you're smart and if you fight to have the government and businesses invest as much money in renewable energy as possible, as quickly as possible to create the softest landing possible. Mm. Okay. And um, how has the system failed you or a loved one? The system has failed me because it taught me early on that growth is forever and I can do whatever I want for the rest of my life, that I can just be a filmmaker and be an artist because I didn't want to get a regular job because I didn't want to be productive because I just wanted to live off the fat of the land and the oil and the exploitation of people all over the world. Mm. That wasn't presented to me like that right. uh, for several reasons. One is because no one wanted to hurt my feelings. Two, my parents probably didn't think of it in that way. And number three, it's to the benefit of people that make a lot of money off my kind of lifestyle. Mm. Then, I mean, a more direct way, right, without me being so obtuse, is my girlfriend. She graduated college and she's uh, since had three jobs that don't require a college education because that's where the money's at, is jobs that you could get right out of high school, theoretically. And she's lucky enough not to have a massive debt. Her parents are doing fairly well. But for all of the friends around me and the people that I meet here that are tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt for school and they actually stay in school because that's where they get the loan so they can feed themselves and house themselves just get deeper and deeper in debt so that people can finally think that there'll be a big enough overthrow of the government that they'll have some kind of relief in student debt that's wow. what people are banking on mm. and hoping for Ooh. and right now americans are too satiated and too comfortable to join these folks that mm. have either more desperation or some weird gene uh, that gave them some weird thing in their brain that make them actually stand up for what's right when it doesn't affect them directly. Uh, so that's why I'm out here. Those are my beliefs. Those are the people that I think are impacted in my life and the people that are impacted in it outside of my direct life are people all over the world that have a really difficult, treacherous life in order for me to be able to do things like hang out here midnight not care about where I'm gonna sleep and for you to have this kind of camera with all these ingredients that came from all over the world mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm thankful that you asked me those questions and I'm thankful to anyone who watches this and listens to five to six seconds of it. Okay, great and um, what would you like to see come out of Occupy Wall Street? What I'd like to see about uh, 
uh, Occupy Wall Street is to get the population, uh, a, a massive agreement that the population of this country should really be more like 5 million rather than 300 million. And we should all use our, uh, in the way that we make that happen is we have mutual agreements that only one out of uh, 10 couples will have children and it will only be one child and we'll praise those children and teach them the ways of sustainability. We're going to use all the oil that we have left to give us a, a natural, uh, beautiful, soft landing on the downward slope of our economy. What's really going to happen, which I think is kind of what you're asking, what I hope will happen in reality is that there's two possibilities. One is that Wall Street will be taken down and uh, and the people here will win, there'll be a massive uprising, or two, the police are gonna come and shut these people out. Mm. Those are the only physical possibilities of what's gonna happen here. Okay. Now, getting on to what the actual function is right now that's succeeding, is that this is m bigger, Wall Street, Occupy Wall Street is much bigger in Europe than it is here, right? Three blocks away, people never even heard of this movement, but in Europe, <laughs> And all around the world, there's this perception that there is a massive uprising in the United States and people aren't going to take it anymore. People are actually occupying Wall Street. Right. And that is giving them courage to go around the world and maybe start their own revolutions or at least get out of bed the one day of the revolution they didn't feel like getting out of bed. It's also inspiring people in the United States to start local initiatives to fight austerity measures, uh, to make sure that they've got enough uh, uh, health care in their communities and demand more money from their governments or get together in a cooperative way so that if their government doesn't have the money they can work uh, together to create something better.